noite. Nossas saudações a você que Good está aqui nesta noite. Welcome, Olá, everyone. This is a special night, the third and last night of LGW's Free International Congress on Education. It is a new edition because of the pandemic. We, we have been uh, promoting this event online, but we cannot stop. We have to continue working. So that's why we are always concerned about education, educators, students, and educators are really responsible for, of course, education of future generations. Thank you very much for the participation since day one, and thank you very much for you that are joining us for the first time. So we can follow all the pedagogical practices, the lectures, and thank you very much for your participation. So we can find information on www.lbv dot org slash congresso de educação in portuguese so you can have details about the first lectures and of course yeah we're going to have more news about this event that happens every year so let's begin so thank you very much for your participation so we invite you to watch the lectures and the pedagogical practices you that are watching us please write in the chat on youtube where you're from what do you do so we have here some messages here from our participants. We have educators from Capão Bonito in Sao Paulo. We have more than 200 professionals watching our Congress. Teacher Professor, uh, Teacher Roberto, uh, thank you very much for participation. All educators from Capão Bonito, it's a pleasure. And we have other teams, Gabriel Andrade, Rosana Vivaldini of Itaquera São Paulo. It's a pleasure. So, Let's proceed. So now let's reflect upon ourselves. It is our tradition here at the Legion of Goodwill. So we're going to dedicate this salute that aims to strengthening what we have inside ourselves. So let's uh, begin with our legionnaire salute. God is present. Jesus lives in our hearts forever. So now let's proceed. Let's continue with our tradition by nourishing our soul in a moment of silence with Jesus. Nosso coração tranquilo, acalmando, aquietando os nossos pensamentos, os nossos sentimentos. And our thoughts are calmer as well. So let's continue with our event. It's important to remember that our Congress is being translated into Portuguese, of course, English, Spanish, and Libras, Brazilian Sign Language. And the, and the theme is strategies for online classes, technology, games, and inclusion, a view beyond the intellect. So let's welcome everyone that is joining us, teacher Aline Paga, pedagogue from the Legion of Goodwill. Teacher, welcome, God is present. Jesus lives in our hearts forever. So welcome everyone that is watching our event. It is the third and last night of LGW's 23rd International Congress in Education. So we were teachers, we like Camila. Yeah, we are educators. I'm not a teacher, I'm just a mother. So when we talk about International Congress in Education, we know that one of the things that engages children and human beings in general is emotions, of course, right? We know that. We have, we are aware of that in the lectures. And yesterday, let me tell you something. During uh, the lecture by Diane and Holo, LGW's teachers, they proposed a challenge to us. So I would like to ask you 
and of course the, the members of the audience. Do you remember what happened? Of course, I'm not a character from fairy tales. <laughs> I'm not Little Red Riding Hood, but I, I do have some uh, materials. So we have our uh, mobilization for today's event. Do we have our challenge kit for the Education Congress? And the teachers gave these materials to us. So now let's check what we have inside this surprise box. Let's have a look at what we have inside this box. So we have a sheet of paper. Okay, let's check. Three cups. Okay, plastic cups. And okay, perfect. And we have an adhesive tape. Scotch tape traces, a spoon, and a pen. Did you get these materials? <laughs> so let's proceed. So welcome everyone. one. Our hearts are full of joy. We had two amazing nights. We learned a lot and we know that this joy, this enthusiasm, has to be in people's houses, for sure, because they have been facing a great challenge in mediating the educational process. But of course, let me tell you something. The ones that are responsible for conducting students are the teachers, educators, of course. We are responsible for that process. So I hope that tonight we can learn lots of things, not only for educators themselves, of course, but for parents that are watching us. They are, are developing educational activities, brand new activities. Yeah, during the pandemic, some parents said, said now you understand what teachers have to go through. Can you imagine 20 kids, 30 kids, 40 kids? So that's a huge challenge. And we understand how teachers make their best. So educators had to adapt themselves to the new conditions. But now teacher Aline is joining us and she's going to watch our event. And that's true. That's a real challenge. We want you to get the materials and we're going to have a challenge. Okay, so please, if you haven't got the materials, please do. Okay, teacher Aline, thank you very much. Welcome to our event. Have a wonderful Congress, everyone. Yeah, so let's continue. So let's talk about our highlights. Let me tell you something. If you want to post information about our event, please do at LBV Brazil. So we can repost and share. And it's lovely to have you here. And now let's proceed. So we have a cultural presentation. We know that LGW students have rehearsed and prepared something special for this International Congress. So now we're going to have a song. We have adaptation by Alzir Tonin and the Philharmonic Orchestra, Juliana Cassel, a musician, and the edition was done by Henrique Pedra.
linda música, o cisne, música de Sansan, orquestração. Wonderful music, the swan, adapted by Alziru Tonin, and of course played by the Philharmonic Orchestra from LGW. So this presentation was wonderful, and I know that your hearts are warmer now. Students that were able to convey a bit of a message, and we can reflect upon that message. And thank you very much for people that are contributing to LGW since day one. We have been inviting people that are watching us to donate to LGW because our uh, LGW has been uh, doing a great job in social assistance and we have been promoting aid to families assisted LGW's programs, food baskets, clinic kits, masks, blankets, vegetables, milk. So those are important items that are of utmost importance for families. And of course, social distancing. Social distancing. You can donate by pointing your mobile phone to the QR code, and then you can donate uh, by using this QR code. By doing this, you're aiding thousands and thousands of families that have been vulnerable. We know that the poverty indexes show that we have to act, we have to make decisions. So thank you very much for your contributions. And before we call our lecture, lecturer, let me just say something. We have uh, Jardim's School. They are from Aracaju, Sergipe, and Jardins Go from Salvador, Bahia, and Augusto Ramos School, Moria from Guarulhos as well. They are all schools that are always proud. Uh, at LGW, the National Congress of Education, and in, not only in person, but of course online. Even though they are distant, they are watching us. That's lovely. So now we're going to have our lecturer, and we're going to discuss the topic of uh, strategies for online campus technology, games and inclusion, a view beyond the intellect. Our lecturer is Professor Sueli Periotto, PhD in Master in Education for the Pontifical Catholic University of São Paulo and Supervisor of LGW's Pedagogy of Affection and Ecumenical Seats in Pedag Pedagogy. So let's listen to Professor Sueli. Hello. First things first, what a wonderful day. Are you enjoying the event? I hope so. Because we had 40 professionals from social assistance centers from LGW that were involved in the creation of those pedagogical practices that we are showing you along those three days of Congress. We're going to have five unforgettable moments from those professionals. So thank you very much for the lecturers that we have had during the event. Thank you very much for the uh, principals at LGW, the social uh, superintendents, Aline Braga, as well, that participated in the organization of those materials and the teams as well. So on behalf of the Legion of Goodwill, thank you very much, uh, Paiva Neto, because yesterday was his uh, birthday and he has dedicated his life to the Legion of Goodwill. He has turned 80 years old. And of course, his work has uh, promoting fraternal love. So thank you very much. It's an honor. So now I'm going to mention a concept created by Pavanetto. And this concept is applied to community centers, of course, and to uh, schools. He says something really important. If techn technology overcomes human barriers, and the internet is an example of this, it is essential that solidarity develops itself ahead of it in order to illuminate its paths. We have never been at a more auspicious moment for demonstrating how potentially great the possibilities are for using technology in the service of people. 
So those are words that were uttered by Paivaneto a long, long time ago. He was not making reference to the pandemic, of course, and social distancing. No, he only understood internet technology as tools. And of course, they are really fundamental for education and of course for all other fields of knowledge. But Pavanetto's proposal is based on a holistic understanding on Jesus' legacy, which is uh, our reference here at LGW. Not only do we recognize the importance of the divine pedagogue, Jesus, Pavanetto also has delved into along his whole life in studying the contributions in terms of solidarity and sustainable contributions that Jesus has brought to all areas of knowledge. So, the education promoted by LGW is an education that is not confessional, so it's a non-confessional kind of education, and it is revolutionary. It's a, re a revolutionary perspective that was created by Jesus. So those are the assumptions of our work. So Jesus is our reference. How Jesus uh, treated people, of course, Jesus treated everyone uh, the same, regardless of financial or social conditions. So Jesus sees people as the same. He sees value in everyone, especially people that were considered people that did, uh, did not worth, didn't have enough value. So Jesus says that in order to educate, we have to understand and value the cultural background and of course, children as well. And Jesus, of course, says that education implies in nourishing critical thinking, but also creating a solid, uh, a solid day perspective. So this is something that we have to have we have to have a better reality, of course. So Jesus always talks about eternity of life and the impact of our actions on people and on the world, even after our death. Of course, this contributes to us to a kind of education related to uh, human and social sustainability. So that's really important. And based on that, Based on that, uh, our Congress aims at the relevance of technology in education. Our institution, as you know, uh, uh, thinks that digital tools are important. They are facilitated. There is no doubt about that. Educators want to diversify their lessons. We use different resources that can engage. They can engage and motivate students. And we have to establish bonds, of course, with books and education. So when students are engaged via technology, they get more excited in a certain way, and they wouldn't give up on the explanations uh, that teachers promote. They're going to hand in activities and tasks. So what I'm saying is that it is of utmost importance for us to uh, break through barriers and we have to do our best in order to cre create ways to motivate students. We have to update our technology and our concepts as well by taking courses, by discovering new tools, because of course we understand what a young people want and kids want and we have to fulfill those needs. We cannot be outside their reality because at home, they are young people and kids are involved in the digital era. It is something that surrounds them, and we have lots of competition. And sometimes this competition is tough to be overcome because they have video games and other things that engage them. And sometimes they are more engaged in those activities compared to school. So we have to be aware of the role of technology in order to make our classes more engaging. This is, of course, uh, based on LGW's pedagogy, which is a kind of pedagogy that is different. And when we talk about ed uh, education with uh, ecumenical spirituality, so what is that? So we have to take into account that we have to align the pedagogical contents to ethical, ecumenical, and spiritual values. So we are not going to emphasize intellectual wisdom in detriment of spiritual values and vice versa. 
aqui embaixo. So we have to have a balance. We have to establish a connection between them. We have to balance them. So in Pavanetto's pedagogy, he says that not only do we have to have access to technology, but that's not enough. We have to direct it because it's a means to an end. It is something that can promote the expansion of our lives and improve our society. But Pavanetto says something really important. So developing contents, pedagogical contents, is not enough. All the technology that we have around us at school is not enough to meet this uh, being that is ahead of us. Pavanetto says something really interesting. He's, he talks about an education uh, from a perspective that goes beyond uh, the intellect. So what is the meaning of that? How large that approach? What is the meaning of viewing beyond the intellect? What is the meaning of that? So Pavanetto is teasing us in a good way because he wants us to look differently at students because students are not just figures or numbers. No, no, in a tennis list. No, of course not. Students have to feel uh, valued by the background knowledge they have. So students have to be aware that teachers know that they have potential. So students have to be developed in their skills, in their uh, skills, of course, and competences. And students have to have to be aware that they are capable of doing things. So students have to say, wow, I can fulfill my dreams. I'm not limited. So sometimes because of struggles in life and difficulties and challenges in a subject, for instance, sometimes students may feel that they are not, uh, they, are not uh, they are not good enough. So if they were not able to achieve an objective, no problem, they're still able if they make uh, more effort, they can achieve higher grades. So those grades do not define those students. That is our message. So beyond intellect, we have to tell students that they have to, uh, they have to keep in mind after they leave LGW, after they reach all their objectives, they have to bear in mind this commitment. They have to know that they are able to take uh, the course they want so they can uh, achieve the job they want. So students have to know that the socioeconomic situation is not related to their potential. So what I'm saying that their potential is not related to where they live or their socioeconomic uh, condition. The potential is inside their souls. But of course, uh, the student has to be granted uh, possibilities in order to develop its potential. That's why we are working with uh, uh, those students. So in concrete terms, especially because of the pandemic, we have been doing lots of things, establishing lots of plans in creating both students. So every time we map how students are learning, so let me give an example. We had to talk to students, for instance, that he didn't hand in the first material that the teachers had given to them. So we noticed that families uh, from 51 students in Sao Paulo, we have our José de Pavanetto Institute with more, more than 4,000 students. 51 students didn't hand in the project, the task. So we noticed that the families were not aware of that. So we were establishing partnerships with families and we're establishing partnerships with other support uh, institutions. So let me highlight something uh, that was done by the José de Pavanetto Institute in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So there was a, a big partnership around uh, those students. So we established a very interesting uh, perspective. So we want to talk to the families. We had to explain uh, to the families many, many times in order to make them understand uh, what uh, happened, what's happening to those students. We had to explain the families uh, how education was going to change, the video lessons, we had to, to explain to them actions with their families and with their students. And sometimes you would send this material to those families, their lessons, the lessons, and we had to record 
some audio messages to the families explaining the meaning of those materials. So we have to have this, we have to embrace those families. And as the educators were talking to their families, let me tell you, we were taking into account the possibility of having other kinds of uh, partnership, maybe a specialized kind of partnership, a more focused kind of, kind of partnership, because we understood that in some cases, some of our students were, were getting sick from emotional perspective and their families as well. So, as I was saying, I was talking about Sao Paulo, about those 51 students, and, and of course we have, uh, we, we avoided dropout students, so we worked with psychologists, we also worked with feedback as well, we established some plans in order to establish a social bonding, even though they were having remote classes, so we were trying to create virtual options so that those students could be in contact. So even by using mobile phones, we were getting together so students could see each other, they could see their teachers, since the young one, from the young ones to the older students. Let me give an example. Yesterday, we had Connecting Hearts project. So it was a, a systematic project, and that project was able to get students to uh, together, even the older ones, via live sessions. So what I'm saying that sometimes there were some opportunities, some situations that made specific actions uh, to be possible. And they had a huge impact in the emotional health of those students because they have to feel that they are not alone and the families have to feel that as well. And by talking to those families and to those students, we realized that when educators call the families and to the students as well, sometimes the objective was to avoid loneliness. So it was not just something pedagogical. Of course, that's what we meant. We wanted to pay attention to, to, uh, uh, to the students' activities. And we created new opportunities and thinking about students from a holistic uh, perspective. So brain and heart together. So that is Pavanetto's quote. So here uh, at LGW, we, uh, we raise people with hearts and minds. So that's the focus that we want to promote. We had to think not only about the physical health, but also emotional health. Without those two kinds of health, we wouldn't be able to make the students learn. Of course, nothing, uh, uh, remote classes are not the same as in-person classes. And some students that don't have PC, sometimes they have to take lessons by using their mobile phone, sometimes they have some problems in technology, but they are feeling protected, they are feeling supported. Guys can be talking now, uh, that was easy. No, it wasn't it. Was it easy? No. School had to revise many times what we were asking for, the volume of work, the style of the tests and evaluations. This uh, look to see what was going with our pupils, what's happening in each home. This was how we were able to evade school evasion and people understanding that when you don't have less dropping off students, uh, how can we deal with that in such a complex moment? Summarizing what we did on this vision beyond intellect is that the cognitive aspects, the subjects we study, we, we have to teach. In the pandemic times or not, we have to give the content. We have to bring, stimulate them to learn so they, they, they can develop and learn. But the ability of this family, of these times, the family and the students, it was very different. It was a very um, dramatic moment by 
not only the pedagogical aspects, and those feminists, they were in a risk situation. And we were able to see how the ecumenical spirituality can help the um, cognitive development is going to potentialize the, this development in a co cognitive way so that people can reach in a much faster way and more objective when we can connect all those aspects. So, our teachers, they always learning more, they always prepare themselves, we meet so that we can share uh, and, and talk about like the practices that have a better, a better um, result. So we've been in touch all the time, every week, every week we got together to look on those axes in ecumenical spirituality so that we can share between those educators and they mind, they think about those aspects, this ecumenical citizenship. So we can work on those aspects with the school subjects, the things they have to learn. And we bring all of that and put this in an organized way that the children can learn and we can also put that in the evaluations so that teachers and families were able to work together for those purpose and students to um, seed those interests for learning to study and we'd like to say here a big thanks for those teachers who've been working here with us for their support and for their work and their planning. We had so much support here and we had to help those families that have big losses, emotional losses on those times. And we have to exercise those empathic feelings, this affection to be there in their homes in the most present way, even if we were away. And this was only possible to be together in this way was, I would like to show a little bit how we did that, to show how we try to, to create some closure, some closeness, and we'll bring some pictures. On some um, holidays, the kids send us some pictures, they always put the uniform, and those, those holidays was always important for the family to get together, for the child to put the uniform, we had the family day, and then we can see here the family engaging on those activities. We had like a uh, July traditional party and those very wonderful pictures here. And that's good memories we have here, family being together and working. And when they send those pictures to us, we can see the way they answer to our proposals. We had like a, uh, this traditional June party uh, celebrations where LGW educators were able to make, uh, give a feeling of these, these celebrations we used to have in the June months. And they were able to be received and play a little bit before they would get their kids. And then in a virtual way, they were able to do their um, practices, those, their rehearsals and share those things with us. And we had those rehearsals, we had virtual presentations, the students showing the work, uh, the, the groups from our educators. Here we have the, this June celebration, some, some gathering through Zoom, everybody at their homes. You, you see here the age groups, they wearing costumes. The games we used to play on those uh, celebrations that they were able to send to their homes. It was 
a, a good moment to in, um, interact with the family and entertain the family, celebrating those important cultural aspects of Brazilian life. So, and then we had the World Playing Week, some training for some teachers, here with Professor Marcelo Rafael, he gave a workshop at LGW Bolivia, talking about like blue hearts, how important it is for us to uh, stop being adults and let out our inner child inside the families. Here's some training for in, with various themes and, and workshops to control anxiety, uh, physical ac ac activities, uh, movement is life, school, um, helping the digital education for teachers, um, educator in line was experienced to to work on resilience with our teachers and some courses about like playing and learning process, some morning encounters with um, stretching, like engaging the body in those practices through Zoom, WhatsApp and many different um, technological tools just getting together through those tools to not be so far away from each other. We had also those weekly meetings with our pedagogues, uh, literary uh, week, and everybody's seeking learning, education every Tuesday. We had uh, this book week that was online and we, some each family went to the school in a specific moment and then they could like take a cupcake so they, they could share with their families. You he, see here, every child had a specific moment to get there and be in the school and, and uh, the Clogged Trump was from a group, and then we have the case of Small Cake, it was a different class, and then they hit this um, online, and then they were able to bring like two cupcakes. But the idea was to for them to understand that one cupcake was for them and the other one was for sharing. That was the idea of this game. And to reflect and enrich their experience. We see here in these literary uh, aspects, we needed the help of the families. We had like um, formation online, uh, conclusion online, where the kids could celebrate uh, in a very secure way, take the pictures and make um, Summarize, summarizing all these kids being together and concluding and celebrating the finish of the elementary school. This was this made possible to present the work in an online form. When we talk about on this forum, uh, children forum, every mom or dad was able to register and take pictures and being together in this learning process, being part of this proposal we gave to them. Those meetings with the parents and our students was a very important moment also as well for children from middle school to mind about the professional future. Uh, we had some online games with some elementary school. We had a big amount of work here that we put in place to get together, to feel in touch. And so we could 
the, we would be able to not talk about only technology being technology. What we want to see here, what we want to do here, is about to provoke us to think in how the knowledge our students gather and how this knowledge is getting to them. How are we making possible for them to be uh, amazed by this knowledge? So here we have some kids who went to some tests and this technology made it possible for us to be together, to be, to have some closure. Uh, it was not only about being in distant in a physical way, but using the technology to stay together in a more uh, subit, um, spiritual way, in a more emotional way, so that we could like, for some special students, we would like give a different material for some students with special necessities, would have an extra lesson where the teacher would talk straight to them to talk about subtraction. And then the student would see, oh, the teacher is talking to me. And then we could like, in a way, uh, summarize our line of action and see the technology, using technology beyond our intellectual way. And would like to bring back some words from José de Paiva Neto, who is the author of this proposal, of this, he says. If there is something missing to the globalizing technology, yes, heart and soul. We need to find we need a bigger partnership between feeling and intellect. Um, solidarity in a world way has to be a big part in the way to have freedom and transformation in society and not only the nervous system in a technological society, José de Paivanet. Thank you very much. I wish to all of us a lot of learning today here with all the pedagogical practices we're going to have here. Thank you to everybody from those 17 countries that are here with us. Thank you for us. Uh, and Jesus lives in our hearts forever. Thank you very much, teacher Sueli Peridoto. We are very happy being able to share your experience here with us. And we move forward with our schedule. And, and we're already thinking with our hearts that we want some more, but next year we're going to have more. And it will be happening each and every year. Stay in touch with the LGW team if you want to if you want some training in your school, get in touch with our team, and we're going to make this possible. I would like to also to thank all the schools and all the participants that are here with us. Big hug to everybody, to the Eco Pantaneiro Space, Mato Grosso do Sul, Maria Helena and Antonio Monteiro from Porto, Portugal, who are here with us, Elga Campos from Matozinhos, also Portugal, which are here with us. And we move forward with our, and we'd like to keep the tradition those um, days and we give some instructions for parents. Give this attention to the parents, as we said many times, and who is going to answer uh, to those questions made by the parents are Gisela Portillo, uh, our pedagogue at the LGW network. How it's possible to make a schedule at home? Can it be flexible? Well, we know that the schedule is very important in the, a child's life. We need this organization on their daily schedule. And what we can say here is to invite 
the child to organ, organize their day. If they can be able to participate on this organization, it's going to be easier for them to follow. So we can give to the child some little paper pieces with uh, crayons and paint and ask to them to draw in each paper an activity that they have to do every day. They can draw, eating, sleeping, having shower, playing, watching TV, uh, doing homework, stop drawing everything. Then we can put uh, on the schedule. The first thing that they do, having breakfast. And then we can ask the child all the time, what are they going to do on this time of the day? So that the schedule can be in the morning as the child wakes up or at the end of the day, planning the next day. But having the child being part of this process is very important for the child to construct their schedule, helps a lot get them involved. And we have to think uh, mindful about the flexibility that we have to have on this routine. Many families uh, that are working from home, sometimes some days it's not possible to follow this schedule that we planned some time before. So because maybe you have to have a work meeting and then you have to flex, um, change a little bit the schedule. And if this happens, we talk to the child. So we had this, this year planned after watching TV, we would uh, do the homework. But because I have some work meeting here, you're going to do the, this activity here. Okay, playing, you're going to play now. And then later, when I finish my working meeting, you can do this year, homework. And that's how we can work about it, organizing the schedule of the child. How is it possible to get the students um, working there on their activities? Many parents have this challenge by stimulating the children doing their homework and doing all the learning process. The child is very happy when they receive um, some uh, feedback about the work they have done. So what a big tip we can give here for you, parent, or someone who take care of a child and help them along the process. First of all, you can like make a deal with some family member, uh, uh, some uncle, some grandmother, a, a mother from a friend, so that this person can give some feedback to this child. Uh, so you do this, this homework, I'm going to take the picture of you starting the activity and then when you finish it. And then I'm going to send this to to your uncle or to your grandpa. They, they are going to see that you did everything and then they're going to send you a message about how was it. So you can do just that so that this uh, family member or this person can see the child doing the work and then made some video or audio with some positive feedback so that the child can be stimulated keep working on this way and also minding what is the work that is um, coming next. And this is, has a big effect on, on the children when we valorize their work. That's a make possible big results.
Nosso agradecimento à professora Maísa Santana. Thank you very much to the teacher Maísa Santana. In those days, I uh, read the doubts of our parents and the pedagogues, Gisela Portino, and all the other colleagues. Because this is not going to be only important now, it is going to be important for this family. That is a big part on this uh, learning process. In this link between family and school, it's very important. And LGWCDs as a, a thing that goes beyond intellect, as José de Paiva Neto proposes. And we go forward here thanking everybody who are here with us. And having people from all over the world is very important to us. We have people from everywhere ready for the challenge. And if you don't, if you're not ready for the challenge, um, look on the on our Instagram so you can gather the material for this challenge. On our Instagram page is already there, and also. Share, mark you on Instagram. I would like to send a big hug for Adriana Bruno at Bolivia, Bolivia, Silvio de Lima at Lima, Peru. Thanks us for what we're doing. Andrea Baldovino from Uruguay, who is talking about technology being well used on education. And Ananta E from Uruguay is also saying thanks to the technology, she's able to be part of the Congress here with us. And the second year, she's able to be part of that in a distant way. We're going to stay sharing some experience from abroad. We're going to talk. So now we're going to talk about experiences uh, LGW in Argentina, Uruguay, and LGW in Paraguay. So here we go. So we, uh, they're going to talk to us about the importance of recyclable materials and ways to make the student the protagonist. So to uh, be hands on, both a more, a more a meaningful uh, education. So let's, let's go. Things were really different, right? First in classes, students were able to uh, try food and work with food. And maybe they could listen to, of course, to a tale in a specific place. So they were able to uh, get in contact with nature. They were uh, gathering food from our gardens. So kids, of course, they valued uh, food and they spent a wonderful time with other kids from the same age. And this was important because they put the they put in practice the importance of living together. They expressed creativity in a very harmonious environment, sharing materials and taking care of their own materials. They were together. They were focused on their art. So they were so happy. They were the protagonists. They were so thrilled. They were focused. And they were, uh, while they were working with the activities, they were unforgettable moments. So we had families, parents, teachers, students together. They were able to develop projects. So this, uh, this way, they uh, participated in a very active way. But this has changed because of the pandemic. We had to change our approach. We had to change our method. The institution was focused on that. So the institution, of course, uh, was aware that the pandemic has made families more vulnerable. So that's why we provided food to kids. And this food is delivered every 15 days. So each student received a school kit. This way, we contributed to the right of uh, having food. And of course, we helped, we aided in education. One of our first proposals was working with identity. We wanted to create a board with the students' names. So the, the student had to identify, to associate, uh, and of course, had to have fun in the activity. So the student had to 
make use of different tools, different materials around them. So cardboard, pictures, clothes, uh, clothes pins. So this activity, of course, was uh, wanted to work with those kids. So we were concerned about the students' uh, names. And according to the age group, we changed the approach. It is fundamental to motivate students and teach them about uh, this moment. But not only with words, but we can do this with actions. Because as uh, small citizens, they can put this into practice in their houses. So this way, they are paying attention to, to those acts. Another important method that we have devised, because we, we are aware that families and kids spend more time together, and we know that even though they are small, they can make decisions and do things at home that are really important, maybe uh, throwing away trash and maybe organizing their clothes and organize their toys, among other things. So uh, we created uh, a tale that would narrate uh, what they did, how to help their families in household chores. And, and of course, that was, uh, that was important to motivate students. And, and this way, we helped uh, students by using pictures and students were more focused. What is the ant doing? It's carrying a leaf. Where to? Oh, to its house. Wow. Did you like the tail? Yes, I did. Yeah. Very good. All the topics that were worked uh, were knowing yourself as an artist and via colors and geometrical uh, shapes, kids were able to draw their own art with different techniques. Uh, for instance, uh, dotted lines, glowing pictures. So we were able to provide uh, a myriad of tools that were easily accessible, such as colored pencils, colored uh, piece of paper, cardboard, bottles, among other materials. What about the games? Not only did we want to develop skills, but also the ability to follow instructions. We wanted them to follow instructions, and students were able to express their development according to their skills. This way, in a very spontaneous way, they were able to do the activities without being afraid of making mistakes. So it, but it was not easy. Of course, we had challenges to overcome. That's why, for my lesson plan, I organized a special uh, uh, a place in my room. I decorated my house with some drawings. I had a very important team that help, helped me with that. Because when we record videos, we have to take into account uh, noise, of course, because sometimes sounds can be disruptive. Uh, the enthusiasm, the our motivation in elaborating our video lessons was really important, of course, because we wanted to convey the message with love. We wanted to teach with love, but that's not enough because families, of course, have to support us. That is fundamental because families are the link uh, between teachers and students. And we guided uh, students and, of course, their families. And what I'm saying that the fact that the families are helping make the kids feel more secure, more comfortable. So by doing this, not only are we working with the knowledge and concepts, but kids can express their emotions as well because families that support their kids do this in a very happy way so i'm really happy to be here to take part in this wonderful congress i'm really happy to share my experience with you 
professora das turmas de três anos. Eu vou contar. Oh, I'm Olga. I'm teacher of the three years old students. I would like to say about uh, we are living in a different moment. We have different technique at home. They can use those this story Violeta, where we can share with them, and they can answer some ans give some answers drawing. What we look forward with this activity, them being so small, uh, is to simulate the vocabulary and make. Uh, it has to be worked on this way. Azul Violeta. Aí um, tem um pão? Isso. Uh, yes. Que, what Violeta is doing when she got wet? She was so small. It was Juan Uruma? Well, I'm going to talk about the activity that I chose to work at home. The proposal was to observe trees, and take the leaves that were falling down to make some collage. The objective here was to observe uh, in a family the changing of the season and to talk between them how important the trees are in our life. Uh, what I chose to work with the students was was in this moment the activity was um, play doh colorful play doh and the objective was to stimulate the development sensorial development and the family interaction. Which course are you using? Blue. And which color are you using here? This is orange, green, and yellow. And what are you missing? The blue. And what else? Red. I'm playing the dough here. And we are going to... How are we going to do that? Yeah. It's we need like five different colors, yeah. or you can use more colors if you can. You have to make with uh, flour, salt, and water, and a little bit of oil. We need to some uh, color. My name is Alejandra, and I'm. Um, art teacher and body expression. And what I chose for my activity was very simple materials, some pencils, some paper towel, and a bucket of with water, so that the children can stimulate their creativity, their imagination, and their ability to get surprised. Uh, transform this paint in something else. 
Can you guys see it? Hello, my name is Sara, and I work with Jessica in the LGW in Argentina. We are teacher with two to three years. And this year, at the pandemic, we are working with the children in a, a present way and in a different way, a remote way. What we like to share here, how were we able to propose to them as much as present, uh, in person as in a remote way? At this moment, we explore different uh, seasons so that they can feel autumn. We would like to understand this proposal here. We start from this season we are working now. We work with this uh, playful scenery so they can like uh, research nature elements, some uh, leaves, different sizes of leaves, seeds, different trees, different branches, um, so they can explore and research and get closer to the nature elements. Uh, beyond that, we use different techniques so they can uh, transmit their feelings and emotions. We would like to show a video that we sent to the family with the, those proposals. Hello, people. How are you guys doing? Uh, we are having this meeting here to share what you guys are going to go do next. And this story, Philotea, had to make a very important decision. I'm going or not? Am I going down or not? And then afraid, she was just looking. And then she said to herself, uh, braveness, uh, took her hands, closed her eyes, had a big breath, jumped and didn't did jump. And then she put some shoes, some glasses, a blanket, a pillow on the bottom, and then she started like counting and she didn't jump. It's so high. And if I break myself, I need more protection. She put a vest, a proper vest, a helmet, and then she uh, swim go go. She got the boat ready and jumped and like fly a little bit, breaking nothing. Leaves always get afraid of how this falling is. Autumn is a very happy moment. Uh, guys, we have a surprise for you guys here. Let's open this bag together. Let's see what we have here. Uh, we have a, a story. We have a, a sponge. A little yellow toy. And Let's let's decorate Philotea together with your parents' help or any grown-up that are there with you now. After reading this this story and watching the video, put in a plate some colors and let's see what we can do here with the sponge. You can print on top of the leaf, on top of the autumn leaves decorating and look how beautiful it can get and now let's see what we can do one two three look at that look at that what happened <laughs> 
Look how this worked. I hope you guys like this activity and I hope this is going to be very fun doing in family. And we ask, please send some videos to us so we can see how was this playing at home. The case. Colorin Colorado is a story that just finished. This story, this fairy tale, is about games. Did you guys like it? We love those pedagogical practices that were shared by LGW's educators in Argentina, in Paraguay, and Uruguay. Now we have to continue. Let's proceed. So now we're going to have Diane Evaristo and Romulo Romito here from LGW's Institute in Sao Paulo. And they have been following us in those three nights of events. They are bringing pedagogical practices that use the daily routine at school. And now we're going to talk about, we're going to watch the pedagogical practices. Good evening, everyone. Are you ready for another day of great learning? So on this third night of LGW's 23rd International Congress in Education, we're going to have much news. Hello, good evening. Yeah, we have reached the last day of our Congress. We still have many strategies to present. Okay, but before, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm ready, but, but I mean, but for what? I mean, for that challenge. Remember that we talked about that challenge, the special challenge? Yeah, that's true, but I do not know what that challenge is, but I'm ready for that. What about you guys? Are you ready to separate the materials? Okay, so let's find out what teacher Sergio Filippi, our sports coordinator at the Jose de Paiva Neto Educational Center in Rio de Janeiro has prepared for us. Good evening, Diana Homoly participants. So as I said yesterday, today we're going to do a special activity, actually a challenge that is really cool that can be done by kids, adults, and the elderly of any other age group. You got the material? Okay, so here we go. We're going to get the adhesive tape and glue it to the cup on a surface. Could be a wall or maybe a, a plain surface. If you don't have it, maybe you can glue the cups on, on a table and then you get the marker and you're going to mark each cup, maybe one, two or three dots or maybe more than that. In my case, I worked with 10, 30 and 50 dots. And then we're going to get the sheet of paper, as you can see, there's going to be our paper ball. So let's wrap it. Perfect. Until we have a paper ball. So, of course, we're using uh, motor skills and reasoning. So here we have our paper ball, as you can see. And with the spoon, we're going to create a lever for the, for the paper ball. So it's my attempt now. So now we have our challenge, okay, everyone? So I'm going to get the paper ball, place it on the stem of the spoon, and then we have the lever. So let's try. Okay. One more attempt. The paper ball on the stem of the spoon. The lever. One more attempt. This activity requires accuracy. Just a second. Here we go. Oh, okay. So I will try one more time. So now back to you, Romulo. Okay, Dio Sergio, we're going to do a, try the challenge here, and you guys can try in your houses, okay?
Parabéns, Diana. Grande pontuação. Congratulations, Diana. Great score. Romulo, I think you have to practice a bit more. And what about you, fellow participants? You want to know if you were successful or not. Please write in the chat your score. That's an activity that can be used with, uh, of course, can be practiced by the family members and everyone else. So may you have a wonderful Congress. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Teacher Sergio. I'm going to practice more, I promise. Yeah, we think it's easy, but it's not easy. By practicing, I can get more points for sure. That's it. So we have to practice in life. And Diane, let me tell you something. I know that the word challenge is part of our daily routine and the participants' routine. Because adapting uh, the activities that we do in in-person classes, in remote contexts, in a very short time is a huge challenge. For sure, for sure, it's very challenging. But I'm also sure that as the days went by, all the words became part of our daily lives. For instance, overcoming, learning, creativity, yeah. Actually, now we're going to watch in the presentation of teachers Caldani Tengan and Douglas Pereira from the Alzido Zaru School of Early Childhood Education in the Federal District, the creative way they dealt with the challenge. So here we go. Good morning, Teacher Claudiani. How are you? Hello, teacher Caldiani. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. What about you? Yeah, I've just read the newspaper and something that made me concerned. Look, anxiety, depression, problems, learning problems. One year uh, far away from schools and kids are suffering the consequences of the pandemic. Yeah, that's really bad. We have to do something about that to uh, improve our classes. For sure, 2021 is the year of the Olympic Games. What about creating our Olympic Games? That's wonderful. Count on me. The kids are going to love that. We have a myriad of possibilities. Months later. Hello, testing, testing, testing the audio. Let me just adjust my camera just a second. I think the, the other teacher is not here. Teacher, are you there? I think you are on mute. I cannot hear you. What about now, teacher? Can you hear me? Yeah, that's perfect. I can hear you perfectly. We have more people coming in. Wow, so many people. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Good evening. How are you doing? Are you excited? Okay, so please, thumbs up. <laughs> so let's begin. God is present, Jesus lives in our hearts forever. 
So we are here today to share some pedagogical practices that we have been using in our school, especially in this very challenging moment because of the pandemic. We had to be creative and create new opportunities. Yeah, for sure. Families inside their houses, kids at school, too much energy, anxiety, stress, depression, obesity, sedentarism, low self-esteem, among other factors, they have been affecting the routine of families. For sure, for sure. Families have been talking about their difficulties. Kids and young people have been spending lots of time in front of their uh, PCs or laptops. Yeah, we know that the regular practice of physical exercises is really beneficial. We can regulate the sleep, can keep our weight, our body starts to produce hormones like serotonin and endorphin, uh, decreasing the stress levels, promoting uh, physical and mental well-being. That's true, that's true. We have to simulate this. We know that the brain development and psychomotor development from zero to six-year-old kids is fundamental for those uh, beings. So we're going to increase the amount of oxygen in the brain and students, of course, can behave better. They can develop their motor skills and can get more knowledge. So teacher, let's show what we have done in a practical way, okay? Yes, let's do it. Here we go. 2021 is the year of the Olympic Games in the world. And we, from the Early Childhood Education, Auxilio Zaru, from LGW in the Federal District in Brazil, we're going to light the Olympic torch in the hearts of our young athletes. We're going to have a future full of victories, yeah! The Olympic project has been really successful at LGW, and even because of the pandemic, after some adaptations, we still had to work with that. It was developed in the MAPREI space, so it encompasses rational, emotional, intuitive research, and is used in all social educational centers at LGW. It has six steps that are intertwined based on ecumenical spirituality, um, aligning brain and the heart, as Pavanetto says. Here, the, the student is a protagonist in the learning process. So the first part of the project to mobilize the students, we sent a cartoon to them, telling them about the history of the Olympic Games in a playful way. First step, MAPRE LGW, mobilization. In the second step, we aimed uh, at using the background knowledge of students. This way, we asked students to uh, perform some research via pictures and videos. In order to enrich this experience, we sent them video lessons showing the sports as, as, a, as a guessing game. The second step, MAPRE LGW, individual search of knowledge. Weightlifting. Tennis. On this third step, socialization, we talked about them, the importance of the Olympic Games. So we have different countries. And of course, we have to respect the cultural diversity and giving value to differences. So third step, MAPRE LGW, socializing knowledge. Very good. Teacher Raissa, uh, worked with the Paralympic Games. That's an event that takes place after the Olympic Games, working with inclusion and overcoming challenges. Since the very beginning, it's important to offer kids opportunities so that those kids can develop a good behavior uh, in order to live in society. And we propose adapted activities so that students could live some games, some sports, such as um, sitting volleyball. Yeah, we cannot let the balloon fall. Here we go. Yeah. 
On the fourth step, the collective production, we propose certain uh, Olympic games to be performed in families like jazz, hurdles, golf, basketball, among others. In order to improve the assimilation of the content, the kids were presented some videos with real footage from athletes practicing different sports, as you can see. Fourth step, collective production. All those activities were adapted by using simple materials such as boxes, shoes, brooms, chairs, shoelaces, paper balls, socks, among others. Teacher Hanielli worked with kids um, genetic, gymnastics, exploring music, rhythm, and the movement, as you can see. Artistic gymnastics. Genetics. Students prepared their own material and they played with the movements. Kids had lots of fun. And we had lots of things, right, teacher? Yes. We also worked uh, the main symbols in the Olympic Games the Olympic flame, the five rings that represent the union of people, and the mascots that represent the culture of the host country. So, teacher Elvira invited all students to build a mascot by using recyclable materials, cardboard, gouache. You want to see the mascot? Oh my God, you see? Our mascot. At the end of each production, they had to name that mascot. So here the mascot that my mom and I produced, Teacher Honey Ellie, also talked about the importance of healthy eating by athletes and how this influences their performance. So it is, of course, a good reference. Our nutritionist, Lucia Watanabe, talked about the importance of the banana. It is rich. Uh, it's a rich kind of food. And she cooked a cake that used banana skin. So she used food in an interesting way so we can cut those bananas in circles and here we have the banana skins in the trash that's so cool here it is so a banana skin cake is ready i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed that cake so in the five, fifth step we produced a video clip showing the activities that were created by families along the whole project. It was really uh, emotional. It's so good to see how people were involved. Fifth step, my presentation of the results. This education in times of pandemic, it is an incentive for students to move their bodies. Sport is life. Sport is union, is living together. We have to learn this lesson. Sport is life. We shouldn't have violence. Sport is life. We shouldn't have violence. Sport is union, is living together. Let's learn this lesson well. Sport is life. We shouldn't have violence. To wrap up, in, on the sixth step, kids played an online game, take into account everything that has been taught. At the end of the project, all athletes received a very nice medal for their performance, as you can see. So sixth step, individual conclusion.
So everyone, our objective with that project was to make students understand, know, and live the Olympic Games. And besides that, we wanted to show them how sports are important for their development, not only developing motor skills such as balance, dexterity, facial orientation, but also other aspects, social emotional aspects, and collaborative values such as respect, union, cooperation, collective work, teamwork, knowing how to win and lose, that is really important, overcoming challenges, perseverance, and among other things. Yeah, there are so many benefits that this collective can provide us. And this, of course, is important to cognitive skills. With that project, we could work with contents in a very interdisciplinary way, such as scholars, dramatical figures, healthy eating, the human body, numbers, quantification, weight and measures, descending and ascending uh, order, distance, mathematical concepts, something heavy, something light, far away, close, and other psychomotor aspects that are fundamental for writing and literacy. Yeah, that was it. So thank you very much for your participation here in our lovely event. And we do have a challenge. Maybe you could include physical activities in your daily routine. We are sure they're gonna have lots of good benefits. It's always time to begin. Yeah, please write your comments in the chat. We would love to hear your comments. Jesus lives in our hearts forever. During the third step, we, oops, this way, many educators, yeah, that's true, teacher, families have been saying that they have been tackling challenges, kids, young people have been spending lots of time in front of screens, and this could be a problem. Teacher Hanielli also talked about healthy eating. Oh. That's the end, right? Yeah, that was so cool. And we, some strategies. Um, take care of the mind and the body and the environment. <laughs> And there was even medals being distributed. And this activity will be forever in their memories. Children were there being part of this whole system. And talking about children from elementary school, let's talk about some strategies used by teachers on the Curitiba LBV, LGW school. And Teacher Stephanie Gutierrez will be talking about it. Good evening, participants. It's a pleasure sharing our work here with you guys. Before the pandemic, it was hard to think that like little children following lessons through videos, but this is possible. We had to rethink about ourselves and try strategies to keep their attention on the things they had to learn here to present the letter P, how not to about a princess. Let's do it. Using the word P, pitch, bop, bone, they can chant me into a princess. Here we have a princess to make the lessons more fun. We try to be playful using um, playful backgrounds and use GIFs, images. We got, we got dressed up, we start singing, we use music instrumental instruments, and we did some experiments. All of that with lots of creativity, so that the students were able to learn what to have to teach in a lighter and funnier way, more fun way. Um, K 
transport means using GIFs and chroma key effects. Um, some guests, Stephen, Rodrigo Gutierrez. Beyond that, we use some tools, digital tools, to help us, like Carla, teach, the teacher Carla, who changed herself into avatar inside a game, and did some online circuit where the children had to do some moving. Hello, elementary two. Are you guys doing well? I don't want to scare you guys. That's me, the teacher Carla, in the virtual world. And there on the internet is where I found this game for us to play with. Start now. Jump. 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 Jump with open legs. Jump with open legs. Run. Jump. Jump. Run. Let's jump higher. Let's climb. Let's do some climbing here. On the elementary two, the five and six years old, we had to teach some kids what are neighborhoods and the way a neighborhood works, where is our school neighborhood. How do you do that in an online way? We just use some technological tool. We use Google Maps, where it's possible to visit any place in the world just using address. So we were able to walk around the neighborhood in a virtual way. Using Google Maps, we went also to the zoo in our city and to visit zebras about to on the Z lesson. Z for zebra and Z for zoo. It was a very fun lesson. Using technology, we put also some online games to deepen some knowledge. We used WorldWall. This platform uh, made it possible to make some games where you can edit the game according to the things what you have to teach. The students have the link for the game, and with some adult help, they can access the content at home. Look at it. When they get to the link, the, teacher, the students have this, this page where they put their name and their class. This is a um, chasing game where they have to chase, finding an uh, answer, avoid the enemies. This game was developed by Marilene from Elementary 1, and they were under studying vowels. First one, you. Which of these fruits start with a U? Uva in Portuguese, grape. Then you have the, the figure take to the right answer. Well done. And then you follow the game using and answering all the vowels. This other game is about syllables. F syllables where you have like some questions and have to find the right answer. Let's look for the questions. Which of these objects start with the same syllable as knife, faca in Portuguese? We have two options, TV or ferry, fada in Portuguese. Which one here is start with the same syllable as faca? TV or ferry? Fa, faca for knife and faca of F for ferry. And then we have some memory game here about professions with uh, elementary two. The rules are the same as normal memory game. We choose a pair of uh, images and then if they match, you win. 
No. Muito bem. Well done. Ops. Ops. Legal. E cool. de página, aqui conseguimos ver o resultado And dos jogos. On the next page, you can see all your results. This game was accessed 99 times and shared only with 40 students. So there was a very good result. And here about my activities, we can edit even each game. You can click here, edit content, and then you can change the amount of cards, you can put some more cards, Take, então, o you can change the images, or you can change coisas. the name of the activity of, of the card. É Going back to the earlier page, we can change conteúdo. even exemplo, the model of the game using the same content, the same subject we studied. We can use here the fortune wheel in a different way then. The same content in a different way. You can also change the memory game in a uh, searching for words. Or even you can change the game in an anagram. Beyond that, here at the bottom, you can change the theme of the game. This one here about the jungle or just in many other games in different ways. And these games were used for us on the physical education, where the pupils were able to do some body movements. And to make those lessons video lessons more interesting, we used um, the idea to stimulate motricity, coordination, the, inter and the cognitive way and the emotional way. So we prepared some kits with some materials to understand about um, literature, gender, where we work with the book uh, the monster uh, worker. We could work here. Could work with this sensorial monster, little monster, using like a, a balloon, some flower. It was a big success, as you can see here in the pictures we got back. We could involve the whole family, making some fun time in the family, learning time at their homes. And this was also possible to do in the lesson about measurements and the concept of hard and soft, where we did an experiment with um, tapioca, where when you think, do all students have this material at home? We sent to their homes the, the activity of this month with the material to do this experiment at home. And the experiment is very simple. We put the tapioca with a half a cup of water. You made some dough, and this dough you spread on the table and play with it. You can see here, I, I rub this dough and it doesn't move. It's hard now. It's hard. Look at it. Can you hear that? Look, my finger is not getting dirty. Can you guys see it? Looks like a stone. But if I press with my hand, look what I can do. I can move it. And when I take it on my hand, it gets liquid. How crazy is it? Uh, when it's moving, it gets hard. When you get let it rest, it gets liquid. Hard. Soft. 
and the participation of the pupils was very interesting. And those uh, video lessons were really successful. It was always necessary like, to remember that an adult had to be present when the ch children were doing this experiment. Hello, teacher. Look, it's working here. It's hard now and soft in the same way. What is it? This experiment is hard and soft. Do you, did you like the activity? I'm not able to stop playing with it. Hard and soft. Look, is this hard or soft? Is it soft now? Is it soft now? Now? You can spread on the table. And teacher Marcia from um, preschool made a game about primary colors and with some paper rolls and some popsicle uh, stick we sent the material to their homes as well and we had the amazing results the children loved it this activity Thinking about the students and what they have at home, we thought about uh, using recyclable materials. So uh, it's easy to access and also we help the environment recycling some materials. We, start, we did like a bowl, um, bowling game with about numbers and to develop coordination. Teacher Carla used a plastic bottle to have make a game, an agility game, where they could catch something with not being touched by the bottle. To be touched by it. Have to try again. This game is about agility and attention. And to think about like human body and think about like uh, internal organs, we made a game with a pet uh, plastic bottle, some fabric. They had to use some sock, some soap and water, and then they were able to blow some fo foam with this uh, little plastic bottle and understand a little bit more about the uh, lung. We use also some recyclable materials to do our video lessons. Uh, a box can be a shadow theater, A paper roll that can be like a flashlight where you can learn um, three dimensional forms like cylinder. That's everything we had to talk about. I hope you guys loved our solutions and see you soon. How many nice strategies here. Ah, nice ideas. And the most amazing, were you guys able to see that the families were there together, being part of the process? 
making this more, even more special. Those professionals are amazing. They were able not to engage not only the students, but the family. They were really creative, full of ideas. And we were able to see the results of that about these schools in Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo on the project Connecting Hearts on LGW about the strategies used by teachers on those schools, on elementary school and LGW, Curitiba, Brasília, Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay. So after teacher Romulo's speech, let me invite you to, if you want to receive in your school, even online, the training created by LGW's educators, you can get in contact with us, call 32254618. Yeah, so 32254618. 11 São Paulo and Brazilian code 55. So 55 11 322 So you can talk to the members of the team so that you can uh, talk to LGW's educators and you can learn experiments for sure. Uh, it encompasses games, playful games to consolidate knowledge, pedagogical practices that you use recyclable materials that apply to all age groups, the importance of sports. So you can receive this training directed to uh, your team. So the phone number is 32254618. So one last message before we come back to the pedagogical practices. You that are posting messages online, but if you haven't, please do. Please write at LBV Brazil. So we are here uh, looking at the best stage. So many people have tried the challenge. And now we are spreading the news. And of course, we are focusing on hope. So now let's go back to our schedule talking about pedagogical practices uh, right now. Here we go. We have seen so many things, but it's not over yet. Because let me tell you something. Uh, willingness and creativity are limitless. So that's what we're going to see now from a group of teachers from elementary school at LGW's Institute in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So the practice I have prepared uh, is concerned about different sounds, not only the sound of the room, the door, the pan, or the mixer, the blender, but also they have to get in contact with the sounds of the keys, the melodies in a in a, an instrument. So I have separated seven different sheets of paper with different colors. Each one of them is related to a key. So the student would have access to uh, an instrument, and after the, the lesson, the student would have access to each key, eliciting to each key, each color making reference to a key. So red related to uh, do, orange re, yellow v, green ra, and so on and so forth. Those are the seven keys. So the child would have access to not only the sound, but the colors as well. So they could color the melody they wanted, not necessarily having to listen to everything. But of course, thanks to some rhythms that I have showed them, they were able to play the instruments at home and listen to the sounds via technology in individual lessons and also paint the melodies they created and creating new colors or new sounds. Hello, kids. Are you ready for our math class? Our class is going to be a bit different. I think you're going to enjoy it. So we're going to have a story. Yeah, that's it. So let's listen to the story together, okay? So, story. A Confusing Love by Dulce Angel. Mrs. Chicken laid an egg. Papa. 
But after Mrs. Chicken went away, uh, the two eggs were found by Mrs. Chicken. One egg plus two eggs equals three eggs. Mrs. Chicken got three eggs. Every time she came back to her nest, all their eggs were found by her on the way. So, she would add those eggs to the nest. So, with that story, we begin talking about the addition concept. What a surprise when the eggs hatch it. You cannot imagine the animals that came out of the eggs. We had a goose, a goose was born. Duckies, ducks were born. Garganes, a turtle. A quail was born. A partridge. Chicks. And even an alligator. So this would be really confusing, really messy when this group of friends want to eat. Really, ping ping. One more story has come to an end. Clap your hands if you liked it. Okay, but what about the content when it gets more complex? When we have subtraction with we grouping, what do we do with that? So the game cannot stop. So by using that game, never 10, we have approached this content. In our math class today, we're going to play a game called Never 10 Inverted. For that game, we have to have some materials that were sent previously. So here we go. We're going to have the positional value table, two dice, and the golden material. If you don't have these materials, do not worry. You can improvise. We can use other kinds of materials representing the dozens and the units, or maybe you can write the, uh, the table on a piece of paper. For the hundreds, we just need one. So let's play it. Okay, but who's gonna play with me? It's the second, I'm gonna call my partners. Luisa, Enzo, Okay, so here we go. Let's play the game. In this video lesson, we explained the rules of the game in a practical way. And the answer, uh, the feedback was wonderful because parents understood the aim of the game and they could help their kids at home. Since that year, we began recording lessons and we used social media in order to make the videos more appealing. But as time went by, we noticed that TikTok and Instagram are part of our students' universe and they offer effects, visual effects and filters that make classes more engaging and more dynamic. So, in order to make students learn the content, they can do this in their own pace and take into account their own interests. And in order to make students part of the class, we recorded some scenes using uh, filters modifying our faces and, and voices. So we noticed that those resources made us closer to the students, especially nowadays. And this made the learning process much more meaningful. And we were able to get closer to families because families are really important in conveying knowledge. So our objective was to show students that they are the most important part of that process. 
And without the student, there is no development. And of course, we have to add a humor, humorous touch in order to avoid having monotonal, boring classes. Rather, we wanted to make classes dynamic and funny for those students, of course, and they are the digital natives. We know that. As time went by, we used other kinds of filters that were more dynamic. They represented scenarios and games, and we had students answering questions to us. All those things made the classes more engaging, more attractive, and students were willing to participate. And we wanted to include teachers, of course, in this context. And it's important to make teachers closer to students. That's why we used internet to make the classes more dynamic and in order to make more engaging strategies. Let me tell you one thing about one strategy. We asked students to um, come up with an oral reveal talking about an opinion about a video they have watched in a kind of a vlog. So we wanted to work with reveals, blogs, and vlogs. And students were really comfortable using filters in editing the videos. And that was really cool for sure. So by doing this, they became active uh, students. They were the protagonists. So they could assimilate the contents in a more natural way. So I'm going to talk about um, a very interesting movie. It, so there was a boy that met a giant. It was a very cool movie. I'm going to talk about another movie. This movie is directed by Steven Spielberg. It was based on a road doll book. So they have elaborated a plan to defeat the giant. It, whether the plan is going to be successful or not, we do not know. Juvenile book? No, no. It, it is something for the whole family. I'd like to share two practices that I think were fundamental for uh, the learning process of students, especially in remote classes, when I would say most times we teachers are not able to work with the concrete aspects before we present uh, new content or new concept as we were used to in in-person classes. One of those practices was applied to math. So knowing we know that students struggle in working with algorithms, I decided to bring concrete materials that are used uh, in our classrooms to video lessons. So let's have a look. So when teaching addition and subtraction, I used abacus so that students were able to understand uh, how calculations are done. And after they saw how the abacus worked, the algorithms were presented. Actually, those are actually wrong uh, words that we use. And this is reinforced uh, with students during the video lessons. Regarding the golden material, it was used to teach division by the decomposition of the dividend. And by doing this, students will be uh, more able to understand the step-by-step -step process of the algorithm. At first, it was really complex and abstract for most students. Another pedagogical practice that we have came up, come up with is connected to history. Because in elementary school, as of the fourth grade, students uh, start to learn content with, uh, regarding uh, with lots of names and it's something that they did not expect. So in order to avoid that subject to be boring and monotonous and would cause uh, boredom because of lots of theory, I presented contents in tales in a certain way by using different languages and visual resources to talk about the uh, chronology of the events in remote classes by using editing software and technology as a whole, our classes were more dynamic. So we didn't have to uh, add slides or we didn't have to just read the text to explain the content. 
Now I'm going to share with you some practices and strategies that were really cool, really successful in remote classes. Yeah, we are going to show you. So this is the first practice that we want to share with you. We recorded the classes as a pair. We were able to use our time because we separated uh, one day to record those video lessons. Yeah, and by doing this, by recording those lessons, we were able to make the classes more dynamic, more engaging, and more fun because we could interact with each other during the classes. The second practice that we like to highlight is one that uses um, objects, tools, materials that we use every day so that students could assimilate the content better. In other words, we used some materials, materials that were available at home to conceptualize our content in science classes. To exemplify what we mean, let, let's give you some examples. We have separated an excerpt uh, in a science class regarding transformation of materials. And that's what we did. We used materials that we had at hand to exemplify our content in a pr practical way, to uh, making the class more dynamic and making parents and educators and students, of course, to have the opportunity to perform those experiments in class. So the first experiment is about state. So here we go. So we have strawberry juice. It's liquid, right, for sure. So we have put this liquid into popsicle in the fridge for some hours. Let's see the result. So the popsicles that were in the fridge, now they are solid. They are real popsicles. So they're not liquid anymore, as you can see, they are solid. We have another example. We have a metallic and iron object. As time went, went by, this object started rusting, as you can see. As you can see, underneath, we have some rust here. Usually, those uh, metals and irons rust because of changes in temperature and the sunlight, of course, and water. They can do this. Iron metals they're not so resistant to, resistant to water, and they get rusty. So this rust um, is different from uh, the iron. They have a different, a different uh, texture. That's why the, this object has undergone a chemical transformation. The last strategy was to show students that everyone can make mistakes, including teachers. That's obvious, and we, we make mistakes during the video lessons. We made lots of mistakes because of problems. Baby, babies crying, noises, cars, trains, or somebody would knock on the door while we were making the experiment. So when we were editing the videos, we uh, kept the bloopers in order to make the video lesson funnier and more interesting and to show that we teachers make mistakes and that's okay. In the ecumenical culture classes, I talk to students about the importance of each person has in order to make the world change. Another important thing that I discuss uh, with students is that this change happens at home. Maybe an attitude and action that can look small, it does matter when it's shared with other people. But how can we make children transform the world that we live in? They're so small. Are they able Are they able to do this? At LGW, ecumenical spirituality is a practice that not only concerns uh, ecumenical uh, spirituality subject, but also it applies to all contents, all subjects. We can talk about multiplication and talking about expanding or multiply good practices in society. We can show the development of, of a plant, since it was a seed, how it grows, and we can 
teach kids that as nature, as it happens in nature, we can uh, plant uh, important feelings. In ecumenical culture classes, I show kids that we don't have a, to have a special day to make a difference in somebody's life. No, we can do this every single day. In a specific class for the second graders in elementary school, the topic was my characteristics and dreams. I had a challenge. Kids didn't draw themselves as they were. Black kids drew themselves as if the color, if their skin color was brown. So we have different colors, of course, and all of them are beautiful. And the difference in colors is important and makes the world beautiful. Another thing is uh, mentioned in ecumenical classes is different ways of thinking about reality. That's okay. So when you see how other people think, you can reflect upon things that we have never imagined. And more than that, we always learn something new from other people. But let's go back to our lectures. So after we see this, how can we uh, make students see themselves as they really are? So I, I talk to them about my characteristics. So I'm a real person, no filters that live with them. I'm showing them uh, what they have always seen. And on top of that, thanks to the video classes, video lessons, I'm aware of myself and I love myself. And since I know who I am, I can tell them that they don't have to fit a standard to feel better about themselves or feel loved about themselves or feel smart or talented. No. So that's why I was in front of the mirror and I talked to students. I told them what my characteristics were, my, my size, my height, my hair color, my clothes, and what I needed to improve. And I told them that I am who I am because that's it. I, I am who I am. I am helping the world or somebody. So I am qualified to do this. I have this potential. More than just giving examples of people that have made a difference along the years, and that's important, of course, I show my students that they are responsible and capable of transforming uh, humanity. So many uh, strategies, right? Oh my God, imagine painting a melody with their favorite colors. It was amazing. Teacher Diana, I have seen that you can, of course, create experiments with things that we have at home and they are very easy to make. Yeah, I saw a popsicle there, right? Yeah, Homolo, it was really interesting. The strat strategies were amazing. What about you? Tell us in the chat, have ever applied any of those strategies that were presented? Or have you chosen uh, any strategies for your classes? Diana, our mission is almost over, but let me just tell you something. So to wrap up, we're going to bring a presentation from uh, LGW School in Sao Paulo. Wow, LGW has many uh, perspectives, early childhood early childhood education, middle school, elementary school, SAT classes and technical courses as well. Yeah, when it comes to social assistance, the Legion of Goodwill is uh, very important with teenagers, uh, kids, adults, the elderly, pregnant women, and everything that LGW does in education or their areas, everything is done with lots of love and lots of quality. And quality is something that applies to the presentation that we're going to watch right now. LGW's technical courses. So we have the coordinator of the course, João Gabriel. Hello, my name is João Gabriel. I'm coordinator in the school here in a technical school that teaches uh, audiovisual. It's a very practical course where you learn everything about TV production, um, lightning, uh, filming. With the teaching, we can 
we were not able to be together, but how we had to think about how to teach on those times where we have this, all this equipment here, where the kids need to access that and to adapt to that. We have to adapt to this new reality and find a way to be the best, uh, best lesson for our students. The theoretical lessons, lessons were easy, was possible to do in a remote way, but we need like good internet on the homes and how can we solve the practical lessons uh, using equipment, uh, sound design, and then how could the kids have access to those equipment to do the necessary work? And it was really interesting to see if the kids were like learning what we have to teach through the tests and evaluations. And it was necessary for us to have more work being done and, and give back for us to access their learning uh, process during this uh, period. And then they had to deliver a final work where they could do this in their own homes with um, script, production, edition, uh, graphical design. And there was big work that the students have to give back. The teachers in the technical school, they were able to put a big work together here, starting with what the students have done. I come from the future. How is that possible? What would you say to yourself? Let's stop this, uh, this, this, this problem, these things here. Look, is everything is going to work out. A deep experience. You learned a lot, you did lots of work, you won. You didn't become a football player or a, a race driver, but you have lots of success here. And it was fun. Serious? Human beings? I'm laughing, but my heart is saying to me that I'm wrong. Uh, if we have some problem here, that will be your fault. It's impossible not to relate to it. Life is so special and it's so special because we have the opportunity here to build ourselves now. Uh, a production from the students from the school, technical school on audiovisual. Um, learn with the pain, but don't stop walking. I came back to say to myself, that's it. And the students took to this challenge. And if you want to follow this work, we giving the link here on the bottom of this video and also in the chat. So you can follow all the work the students have done. If you would like to know a little bit more about this technical school on uh, FGW, access our website and inform yourself. Did you see that, Diana? Oh, it's impressive. The, the attention to detail was amazing. And finding the license to use the software and have the technical elements to do the work in their homes. Look, the final work uh, quality here looks like um, college work. Really, I'm going to access the link to look everything. Really, it was amazing what the teachers did here and what they did with their students. Um, without the, the amazing work, without forgetting what LBV, LGW stands for. Ecumenical um, feelings, affection, and ecumenical values that are so necessary for a better life in society. Hey, Romulo, now our mission is really coming to the end. And we'd like to thank you, all of you who spent the, these three days here with us. And we hope these strategies that were shared here, uh, added to the things that you guys are already doing, are going to amplify and give more to you to act in a better way. I'm going to adapt many things in my own lessons. 
from the ninth year and middle school. Me too, Romulo. My brain is overflowing with ideas. Next lessons are going to be amazing. People, thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you for interacting with us in the chat. And we hope you guys learned a lot. We wish you a good evening. Bye. Thank you to all the teachers, Diana and Varisto and Romulo Romito, which on those three days were together with us presenting all these practices. And in these final moments in our Congress, I would like to thank all the participants that like shared with us that were here for Odilene Leal from Annapolis, Goiás, Andrea Dias de Oliveira from Capão Bonito. Good evening. Cássia Camilo de Santos, from Rio Preto, São Paulo. Jessica Alves Antunes, from Cascavel, Paraná. Márcia Quezada, from Rio de Janeiro. Josiane, from Curitiba, Paraná. Ana Carla Ferreira, from Criciúma, Santa Catarina. Daniele Menes, from Salvador, Bahia. Ana Carla Ferreira, from Criciúma. Bruna Silva, from Londrina, Paraná. Kátia Margarete Antunes, and who is also a teacher at the municipal school in Capão Bonito, Adriene Rodrigues from Pelotas, Rio de Grande do Sul, Chance Need, which are following us from New Jersey, Natalia Chamorro from Paraguay, Amelissa Lopes Barros from Argentina, Judith Carvalho from Uruguay, Rosalva Prieto from Paraguay, Cynthia Cartagena from Uruguay, and José from Venezuela. It's nice having you guys here. Thank you very much. Even if you didn't share your name there in the chat, but you have been here with us and give you your attention to those three days, thank you very much. And we'd like to say one more time, our thanks for you guys to learn a little bit more from LGW work, accessing our website, LGW, um, where you can learn what we have been doing in the socio assistance programs, um, community centers, all the schools, and all the work we've been doing in the, here with charity in the pandemic. Since March, in the beginning of the pandemic, we've been helping and we intensify our actions through the solidarity society and teamwork with other uh, governmental bodies to help the participants on those programs and do more with organizations that work in partnership with us. So we could deliver like food, uh, masks, um, uh, emotional help, knowledge, how to protect their rights um, along this pandemic. And it was only possible because you guys were, were with us helping so that we could do our part. And this QR code can take us to our website and you can find also information on our Instagram uh, at arroba LBV Brazil. And you can also find the L LGW in the country you are on, USA, Portugal, Uruguay, Argentina. And like that, we finish our work. I would like to say one very important thing here, who are here with us. LGW has this tradition in train our teachers and the people who are together with us every year with in this way we are going to have another event so that you guys put on your calendar we are having the education congress now the social assistance lgw congress is also going to be online and put on your calendar 30 and 30 one of August in 2021, 30 and 31, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have the 26th uh, Social Assistant LGW Congress on an uh, online forum. And we're going to have the theme uh, inequality, social inequality and poverty, the impacts cycle and emotional from the pandemic. Very important theme here. 
and everybody's invited to be here with us to have more information, to be part of it, to subscribe. And now we're really getting to the end. And third day of this 23rd Congress of International on Educational. And today's 3rd of June in 2021. The first semester finished today, is the middle of the year. And we want for you to take from this encounter is hope. The goodwill that keep us together, that warm our heart, making possible for educators, every professional, uh, family, society is going to be impacted by these children which are being educated with so much spirituality, ecumenical spirituality. And that's how, how I would like to finish and end our Congress today. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts that you guys were here. If you want to go know more, access our website. And I would like to finish with our salute together. God is present. Jesus lives in our hearts forever. Thank you very much. Good evening.